Good evening, all. Saturday night, and I just got paid. Fool about my money, I won't try to say. It's the Wolf Diddy here, and uh, we're on live, coming at you live on Facebook. Brought to you by the Wolf Driver. Wolf Driver with his four pack, the Wolf Pack of Huskies. Special Wolf Diddy Breed Night. The Wolf Diddy is a show where we do different talk about different breeds every night of dogs because the Wolf Driver loves all dogs. This is about the love of all dogs, not just the Huskies. And uh, tonight we have a special treat by special request from uh, one of our uh, very loyal watchers, Mimi. And uh, her mom had a dog a breed called a, a Case Hound. And that's K-E-E-S-H-O-N-D, Case Hound. And it was Tina was the name of the Case Hound, female. So we did wrote a little quick ditty about Tina the Case Hound. And we're going to talk about the Case Hound tonight. And um, she pretty much described it uh, gray and white and black. So, hello Mimi, <laughs> good to see you. And get close to a picture of what Tina might have looked like. And I don't know if you've, I haven't checked on the Wolf's Gang to see if you've actually posted. But, uh, there's gray with white and black. You know, and we get close to what Tina might have looked like. But this is the case hound. And once again, uh, kind of like in the Spitz realm, and toy German Spitz, and also the Norwegian elk hound last night. But cute. Sheila says hello. That's it. But uh, how the curl, the tail's curling around and lays on the back on all three of these last three breeds we've done that toy German Spitz and the Elk Hound and the, uh, and the Case Hound tonight. Hi there, Becky. Good to see you. We're on a little earlier on Saturday. We wanted to start going on earlier, like we said, so we're trying to do that if we can. And we had the opportunity to do that to this evening. Uh, Bucky the Wolf Diddy and. Uh, we're going to just talk about the case hound for a while, then we're going to talk about the Huskies. I've got another special video of uh, a Fleetwood Mac parody that Romney sang about uh, the Wolf Driver tonight. Uh, and I'll describe what that's about when I play it here in a bit. Um, let, me, let me just get him up here, Mr. Case Hound. And of course, the way you pronounce that is Case Hunt. Case Hunt. Case Hunt. So I'm not even pronouncing it right. Case Hound. Case Hunt. Case Hunt. She's got some kind of accent, this gal. Case Hunt. Case Hunt. Case Hunt. Case Hunt. Case Hunt. Case Hunt. Case Hound. Case Hunt. Case Hunt. Case Hunt. On. That's tricky tongue twister there. But that's the right pronouncement. Case Hunt. Case Hunt. Case hunt, which is which is this little baby here. Case hunt. Hi, Caroline. Hope you're well. We're doing well. Um, what's your favorite type of dog? Becky is my mom. It, uh, Becky is my mom. It's Madison. Hi, Sue. Good to see you. Our friends are on tonight. You know, I every time I do a breed, I, I see different dogs. I got. I wish I had one of those too. You know, our dog happens to be Buster, and he's like half King Corso and half um, German Shepherd. Let me show you Just a quick picture of what he looks like. His at least his face. He looks like a shepherd. I get this darn thing to work. I just have devices or something else. They're all different, got their buttons in different places. iPad, iSchmed. There's Busty. <laughs> He's a big guy. He's about 74 pounds. He stays consistent with his weight. I'm lucky. How is your dog? He's great. He's great today. He's been a good boy. He's always a good boy, really. I take him out to exercise every morning on that bike springer and do at least a mile, mile point four, mile point two, mile and a half, whatever. It takes not average five, six miles an hour we're going. 
Kristen, I would love to have run my long-haired husky buddy love, but I miss him so much. Do you have a dog I miss so much? Uh, Roy, I have two case hound, Jack Russell mix, and they're sweet. Cool. And I hope y'all are on going on to Wolf's Gang, W-O-O-F apostrophe S, two words, gang. And it's a, it's a uh, group site where we want you to join up and post the pictures of your dogs and tell us all about them and, and pictures of yourself and your family, whatever, if you like. That's great. He's so handsome. He's a, he is a very sweet guy. We get a lot of compliments on him. He's a, he's a mutt and he's a mix. We had his DNA done. I, we've gone through that a couple of times. We talk about that if you're interested. But whatever the case, um, yeah, he's a bigger guy. Then we small, saw this other small dog on TV today on one of the dog channels, and he was so cute. And he said, oh, I want one of those, too. The thing with Buster, he's just pretty, like, he owns the place, you know. If we had another dog, I don't know, he chased the cat out of the house when we had Emily. She ended up sleeping up in the rafters. We're lucky we're in California, where the weather year-round is okay for that. But he just, you know, he did that or she's under the bed. He wasn't going to hurt her. He just intimidated her to where she just didn't want to deal with it. It's kind of a shame. I feel bad about it because the cat was here before the dog. What are you going to do? Figure it out. It's all good. So back to the case hound. Um, they're, uh, they are excellent with children as companions. It's Madison. How do you... Talk to people in different states like you are doing. So did you find about the shirts? Okay, a couple of questions. Let me answer Becky first. The shirts are happening. They're they're in process, just so you know. It won't be long before we're going to answer. Uh, most likely we're going to offer this for a price. And then the regular white nice t-shirt with the logo, again, stamped on the front and back. Which will be also very adequate and nice, you know. We know what our logo looks like because you're on the site. And then we had a question, how do you go live? Well, Facebook just started a, what they call live streaming. Anybody can do it, okay? Um, you go there and sign up and I don't know if, what, if there's a small fee or not. The Wolf Driver sponsors it, so he takes care of that. But then you get an admin uh, login and you're able to log in. You can make somebody an admin where all they have to do just go to the uh, Wolf Driver, in this case, Wolf Driver site. Yay about the shirts. Yep, it won't be long. I'll, I'll have a, we have another vendor's different process. Am I trying to get the t-shirt price down a little bit? Okay, thank you. Um, so anyway, you go, you can go live um, streaming just like I'm doing. You put a, you have to use a, a mobile device on Wi-Fi. It won't, they don't have it set up to work on a desktop hardwired internet yet, so it's Wi-Fi. So I just turn the camera around like you're doing a selfie, sit in front of you and do your show or whatever you want to do, or talk to people, you know, you do whatever you want. And it, it, you go to your site, which you're logged in as on your site, whatever your uh, Facebook page, rather. And um, this is go um, publish. This is go live. You hit go live, clicks one, two, three, gets your connection, and you're live. And then when you're done, you hit finish, and it saves. Hi, Sharon. Good to see you. It saves on your timeline just like it does on the wolf drivers. So when you're when I'm done tonight, I hit finish, good night, see ya. And you can see, you know. Now, what we do is because these eventually, I guess, will fall off your timeline or be way down at the bottom where nobody's gonna be able to find them, we have a special site called alldognetwork.com, which is where we place all these shows, save videos, they're all in YouTube form, on that one site. So if you go to alldognetwork.com, you can visit, you'll see me as a host, you can go back and look at all the shows I've done for the last three months or whatever it's been. And all the other people we have, hosts that we do different things, dog yoga, doga, we have wolf news, we have a dog specialist uh, training and behavioral show, psychic reading show, paw prints, all these people that are working with us here. Um, one gal that works for the Wolf Driver does a senior dog therapy where they have their joints or got arthritis and stuff to show how they do underwater therapy. Hello, Deborah. I'm here. Good to see you. I'm glad you tuned in. So all these things, alldognetwork.com can really get your head around what we're doing if you haven't already examined it. 
Woof's gang, two words, Woof's apostrophe S, Woof's apostrophe S gang is a group site you can join and we'd love to have you join and post your pictures. A lot of you have already done that of your dogs and tell us about them, you know, whatever you want to say. You know how those group sites work and then you can also communicate with each other about issues you have and problems and questions or just joy whatever it may be that you want to share just like when you share and you say hey I you know I have a um, case hound case hunt a uh, case hound case hound case hound Jack Russell mix they're very sweet so you shared that with me that's cool we just happened to hit on your breed now Mimi uh, suggested last night that her mom used to have a uh, uh, Tina was her name and uh, I said well let's we'll do I haven't done a show on a uh, so we'll do one tomorrow night which is tonight so I wrote a little ditty earlier uh, this is a little ditty I'll play it for a little groove and we write a little ditty minute and a half whatever every night about the breed we're talking about just kind of make up the little elements of the care you know about the dog some things to try to rhyme it make it fun or whatever and right now we usually after we introduce what we're doing here like we have in the first uh you know uh, 10 15 minutes of the program we go ahead and play that and i'm going to go ahead and play that tina the k oh yeah we're talking about tina our k is a strong resemblance to its ancestor called a Samoan. That's Tina Arcade's hound. Now her eyes are medium size and dark in color. Her ears are erect, triangular in shape. Set high on the edge. She's feeling the breeze and stays out of trouble. That's Tina Arcade's hound. Tina, Tina, Tina Arcade's hound. Affectionate and friendly. For Tina, I believe she's across the Rainbow Bridge, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Sue asks, where can I get a... You want a dog, where's a good place to get one without paying a fortune? Well, first of all, I suggest... We talked about this the other night. You know, when you when you go to choose a breed, for example, or you know, a, a mixed breed or a mud, whatever you want to call them, you know, um, you want to look at your environment and see what's, you know, what's your living conditions. Do you live in a house with a yard, no yard, apartment, small, whatever, place to take them out, place for them to run, a place you can take them to run, you know, a dog park if you like. I don't like dog parks. A place that could be maybe off leash and run, you know, that's safe and fenced, all those kind of things. And um, once you determine what that is, then you start looking around for the breeds that do well in those environments. I mean, if I was living in a small apartment, I probably wouldn't want a big, large dog, personally, because I wouldn't have it. Wouldn't be inside. It depends how much they're inside and how much you have time to take them outside. If you work all day, our dog parks bad, Becky. Let me answer that in just a second. Why I said that. Um, the first thing I do is go to a shelter and look for a dog because they need homes desperately, and there's no reason to go pay much money for, you know, unless that's what you have to do. And want to spend the money and get a pure breed something or another. You know, people that go, they got to have a lab. And I understand that. They want a chocolate lab. They want a, my daughter did that. They have an orange lab, red. His name is Crush. They, you know, they paid $1,200 for him. I, that's what she wanted to do. She did, and her husband wanted to do it. So, you know, 
and he's uh, he's pretty hard to train. I've always rescued too. So there you go. Um, also cute. Yes, yeah, she has a Tina about eight years, and she's about four years ago. Okay. I live in a small apartment, Sue says. So I'd be looking at a smaller dog. You know, there's so many cute small dogs. Um, and we can, what you want to do, go back to the All Dog Network and watch some of the shows about the breeds. We talk about them, small, big, whatever. I mean, there there's mixes, there's hybrids, there's everything. It's Sue, Brent's, I love it. So back to the uh, dog park question, Becky said, I Um I wouldn't say all dog parks are bad. Um, out here where we are, there is one at least that's grass. You know, of course, if it gets rainy and wet, it could be a little muddy in places, but it's grass in Laguna, okay? It's big. It's grass. That one's okay. The ones that have the uh, bark, you know, the bark chips and stuff like you put around your garden, uh, they're pretty funky. And the other, other thing about I used to take Buster there all the time. And, you know, you see the same people. Oh, hi, Buster's here. You know, and they're all running around chasing stuff. And you're throwing the Frisbee and whatever. You're throwing tennis balls and everybody's chasing at the same time. And it's hard to keep them separated sometimes. And if a new dog comes in or gets away, all of a sudden, you know, he'll go, he'll, they want to play. It's not like they're going to fight. But there was an incident up here with a pit bull. Unfortunately, it was a pit bull. And uh, it, it uh, bit another dog in the neck. And it was a sad situation for whatever reason it was territorial and, and the owner didn't have control of that or didn't know or it could have been that he had control of the dog but just didn't know what instinct would feather up in a situation of strange dogs it's kind of an unknown no matter what i mean if you have them on a leash and you walk in there if all of a sudden a dog comes out of nowhere that's you know they're you're off they're off leash there that's what they're there for to run around i didn't really have any major problems but a couple of times when he was playing with the same dog he had played with a bunch of times I have a fenced yard, so you're good. You're good, Sue. Anything will work. But my point is, he was playing with his dog all the time, and they were just, you know, how they get up with each other, and they start rolling around, and they're biting, not biting each other's neck. But you know how they do. They're playing, like puppies. Um, he got scratched on the top of his head by a claw. Nothing intentional, but it cut him. And... Um, you know, I, I treated that thing uh, with Neosporin and everything and DMSO for like a year. And it took three years for the hair to grow back because it was scarred. It was an accident. But he's walking around with it like a bald spot on right in the top of his cute little head there that finally it grew back. So, you know, and plus the vet says, you know, there's unknown dogs have unknown, uh, thanks so much, diseases. You don't know what they may have. They may be sick. They may have fleas. They may have worms. Oh, wow. So he says, you know, you're better off not to take your dog to the dog park. So here's what's the solution, because he has to run. That's why I use the bike springer to take him out to ride on a bike. I can sprint him. I can run him as long as I want to run him fast, slow, medium, let him trot, let him walk. I do a variety of that every day. Okay? But down here at one of our state parks in Dana Point, it's called Strand Beach, they have, okay, and you can find these in your area, I'm sure, somewhere, chain link fence chutes that are chain link fences with a little door you go in, and they're either sand or they could be dirt or whatever, and it's like a, uh, a dog run, you know, it's maybe uh, like as far as pitching mound, you know, 90 feet, 70 feet, however long it is, and I take Buster down there occasionally, or I just do it on my side, on my side yard. And we do the frisbee back and forth. He goes, gets it, runs it back, grab it out of his mouth. Or you can take those shoots and do that, where you can play, you know, throw the tennis ball back and forth, and um, the frisbees, whatever you do to get their their real hard exercise out. But there's always a solution somewhere to do that. Then the better solution for me is the bike springer because. It's just a no-brainer. Invest in the bike springer. You put it on your bike. You take them out. Hook them up. I'm going to show you the video again tonight. For those of you who've probably seen it a bunch of times, we're going to show it real quick again. And how that works and why it's so cool. Even veterinarians go, wow, that's the best thing. It's been the very best thing for Buster ever. He eats his regular diet. He doesn't ever gain a weight. 
Just didn't think about of all that. I was thinking it would be good for the dog to get to play with different dogs, thinking it would be safe, gave me something to definitely think about now. Becky said, well, that's the case. I did it for like, what? I got him at 10 weeks and then quit doing it for like till he was like three. Did I figure it out after he got that thing? And I go, you know what? Then they're always dirty too. You know, no matter what. You got other dogs slobbering all over them. You know what I mean? Then you got to bathe them when you get home, no matter what. You got to take him in the car like that. Buster's a cute name. Yeah, I call him Buster Big Paws. It's his nickname because he's got his big brindle paws. But you know where I'm coming from. So something to think about. And most people that go to dog parks, they don't, they just think it's great. And it is great. Don't get me wrong. They get their angst out. And, you know, I, and you meet people and you hang out, talk to them, and you watch your dogs. And, you know, I'd say nine, eight, eighty percent of it's probably pretty safe and okay. But then that, that one accident that can happen, unfortunate out of nowhere, and there you've got a dog with either gets killed or maimed or hurt real bad or breaks a leg, tripping or I mean, you just don't know. Then they slop, then they're drinking out of the everybody goes gets the bucket of water out of the thing, keeps filling it up in three buckets in the big dog park yard, and they're all drinking out of the same bucket. You know, it's just kinda like when you think about it, uh less than a healthy uh, scenario. So I just quit doing it and I don't miss it. He doesn't miss it. I get plenty of exercise with that bike springer. Sometimes I just take a regular walk with him. He's fine. He's clean. Not to worry about any of that stuff. So for me, I quit doing it. That's just me. But it's definitely something to think about. And I, I bet if you, uh, my favorite breed of dog is a pug. Marrow says, you know, I have a pug show on there. Porky the pug was the name of the ditty I remember. And what is the bike springer? Okay, let me show you what this is. This is really cool. All right, let me go to. Uh, Get that up for you. This is a very cool attachment. It goes onto your bike and you can clip your dog to it. And it's just, I mean, to me, it's the best thing since sliced bread. And you know, most dogs like to pull. You know, you have to teach them to heal. And then they're walking. And they can only walk some of that, unless you're an avid af athlete, like an Olympian who can jog for a couple of miles fast and not the trip and your dog trips and all that stuff and gets in the way or decides to go the other direction you uh you just can't beat this thing uh, let's see here da -da -da -da. Let's see what i got here have you ever seen people try to ride a bike and hold the dog's leash okay i'm going to show you all the video and this is by a special request. Barbara, hello. Thanks for tuning in. Bear with us a couple of minutes to play the Bike Springer video so you all know what it is. This is uh, very informative here. Okay. Let me get it going for you. Get my mouse in the right place. Have you ever seen people try to ride a bike and hold a dog's leash in their hands? It can lead to very nasty spills. With the Springer, even if your dog tries to run off to greet friends or chase a squirrel, you stay in control. For most dogs, it takes only a few minutes to adjust to running with the Springer. Think of the Springer as the everyday walk reinvented. What makes this product unique is the heavy-duty steel spring because it absorbs up to 90% of your dog's unexpected tugs. The Springer makes the ride safe and fun for both of you. And the Springer works with most sizes of dogs and most bikes. Like a third hand on your bike, the Springer is easy to use. If you can ride a bike, you can bring your dog. Never enough hours in the day? Now you can walk your dog and get your exercise at the same time. Setting up the Springer arm is simple and takes only seconds. Just install the clamp on your bike. Attach with the cutter pin. You can then release and reattach the arm easily to any bike. The Springer is a great way for you and your dog to enjoy spending time together. After a rest and a water break, it's quick and easy to reattach the Springer to your dog's harness. And the Springer protects your dog from the bike's pedals and wheels, so you can keep both hands safely on the handlebars. What if your dog runs on the wrong side of a post or hydrant? 
The patented safety release frees your dog instantly. Got more than one dog? Bring them along. Dogs love to run in a pack. And with the Springer, you can attach two or three dogs on each side. The heavy-duty steel spring can handle the pulls and tugs of multiple dogs while allowing you to keep your balance. You know that dogs love to run. It's in their nature. In fact, veterinarians around the world agree that biking is the perfect way to exercise medium and large dogs. With the Springer, you can get outside and spend quality time with your best buddy. So, if you want to keep your dogs healthy and happy, buy them a new kind of toy. Buy them a Springer. They'll be sure to thank you for it. Okay. Yeah, it's so cool. I mean, I could show you a video of me with Buster on it the other morning. I was took the phone and I showed it, but you can see how it works. I mean, it's fail-safe. I've been doing it ever since he was 12 weeks old. And the wolf driver turned me on to that. So you can get them. Um, we're trying to restock them. We have a Petscape store, a back-end store for the wolf driver that does, uh, we have all kinds of things, those harnesses, kinds of cool stuff. Um, trying to get our supplier to get us the bike springers once again. They, they've gone up in price since in time because they've become very popular. And um, I mean, once you start using it, Plus, you're exercising, of course. But the coolest thing about it is you can go as fast or slow with your dog as you want. You can stop and rest. So there's no rules. Uh, Buster, I take him out, I get him, he's just walking, average, you know, average three, four, five miles an hour is what our average is. I'm just pedaling slow, and he's kind of walking faster than you're normally walking with a leash, that's for sure. Okay, and then you get him trotting a little bit, a little faster, still trotting. And then... Yeah, I mean, the money's nothing when it comes to your dog. You know, so you pay another $20, $30 for something. I mean, who cares? You only need it once. It lasts forever. Um, and then I'll go, okay, you ready to run? You know, and I'll pedal up and get him running. He's, and he starts running. Like, running. Like, they love to run. And I'll run, and he can even turn. I turn the call to set, come back. He's, he's keep him running. You don't have to slow down, necessarily. And, uh, right, Becky. And just keep running to you know you can tell when it's ready. Okay, ran him, you know, 100 yards, 150 yards. Stop, let him rest, slow him down, let him trot to then he gets down walking again. You can tell when they, their tongue starts hanging out and they start panting that their heart rate's getting up. I mean, it's just common sense stuff. It's like when you're running, you're not gonna run to you and get dizzy and pass out and kill yourself. You're gonna stop running, slow down and rest walk or stop and rest and it's all common sense stuff that's what's cool about it but this is this thing is unbelievable and it just saves so much time you know take a walk with you I mean go walk you want to walk for a couple hours go out park, go take a day and walk that's fine but this thing is just for the daily exercise routine that gets it done and you feel great when you get done because you're riding your bike even if you're pedaling slow or fast doesn't matter and go up hills down hills whatever uh, flat. Oh, I just go around the neighborhood. Everybody's the same routine every day. Let's go for a ride, Buster. Put my helmet on. Hook him up. And we stay out, you know, 10 minutes, 12 minutes is all it is. 15 at the most. We want to go two miles or something. And it's plenty for him. He loves it. Comes back home, chills. What's neat when they get done with that, their adrenaline and stuff. So they, they don't want to go just lay down and go, oh, I'm tired. They want to get going again. Like, go get the bone. Let's throw the bone back and forth. Or the uh, plastic bone or a tennis ball. Or frisbee. Forget about it. He loves frisbee. That's one of the best things. Most dogs that will retrieve. And he didn't retrieve at the very beginning. He wouldn't do it. Throw the ball. He'd just sit there and look at me. Finally, for some reason, he went and got it. And it's back and forth. You know, try to get it out of his mouth. Drop it. Drop it. Leave it. You know, you go through all the commands. and They want to play like that. Frisbee's so cool. He'll go get the frisbee. I have, I have a routine with him. Listen, sit. One, two, and on two he's about to go because he knows three's coming. Three, he's off. I throw the frisbee sometimes. If he can see it, he'll catch it in the midair. He'll bring run back real fast with it, and he'll get down, but he'll put his paw on it, like, take it from me. Get it out of my mouth and shake the head. You know how they do? It's hilarious. 
Matter of fact, what I'm going to do in the next day or so here when I get a chance, I'm going to take him and do the frisbee thing with him, and I'm going to video thing and show you on the show how he does with that, how much fun that is, um, and the exercise that exudes. Then when you do it like, I don't know, five, six, seven times, he'll bring it back the next time, he'll stop in the middle of the yard, he won't bring it all the way back, and he's panting. And he's got the frisbee down under his paws, and he's going to sit down, and he's going to take a break. You know, and take a break till he's ready again. He gets up, takes three or four minutes, he'll rest, he'll want to do it again. So all these things for great exercise and cardio and just keeping their muscles and joints strong is so important. And I've seen it in the last five years, his health and how he is and how strong he is and muscular and, and happy. Tail never stops. He's got a steel tail. So this the reason I'm sharing all this with you is because, you know, I'm, I'm sure all of you love to go out and do things with your dogs, but the more exercise they get that's normal exercise, not over the top, not overdoing it, but consistent seven days a week. You know, occasionally we'll miss a day for whatever reason, but unusual if we do. And then when he stays over at the vet overnight, if we go out of town, he has to be boarded up. I, my vet keeps him. He's got a small amount of uh, personal client dogs that he'll keep overnight, like a pet hotel or whatever. They take him out three times a day for a mile each time. I mean, they love Buster. And, of course, when you spend that much money at a vet, they're going to love him for sure. But they take him out and make sure he gets enough exercise because they know he, he loves it. So that's the way that works. Okay. So our uh, our dog of the evening there, our Tina, which is Mimi's uh, mom's dog from a long time ago. Case Hound. Case Hound. Case Hound. I can't even, how about I never pronounce these? Let me find it. Case Hound. Beautiful. Uh, is our breed of the evening for Saturday. Okay. Case Hound. T-shirts are coming along. Uh, we're going to have all that together. We're also working on something else musically for y'all that you're really going to dig. It's just a matter of time. We're just working out a deal. And I'm going to save that as a surprise where everyone will be able to be a musician. Now, you can all try to guess what, what the instrument is. That's okay. We don't. I'm not going to say yes or no if I see the right answer come up, but we're, we're working on that. It's going to be a lot of fun for everybody and your dogs. You know, I, I have a good friend um, up in Santa Cruz. She had two Huskies and one um, Shepherd. Mimi is a big smile. Thank you. Uh, Shepherd and two Huskies. And she was a singer. Uh, she was in the band I had. And she would teach them to sing. And what the dogs would do, they were so smart. She would sing whatever. Somewhere over the rainbow, for example. Somewhere over the rainbow... In a high, you know, in a high register for a female, a good singer, right on pitch. And pretty soon, she'd sit around with the dogs and sing. They'd be sitting there with her. And she was also a masseuse. And I'd go over for my massage and one day, and she goes, "Let me, let me show you what the dogs can sing." She started singing, and they, you could hear them howling, mm -hmm, almost the same melody. And I just like fell out of my table. <laughs> yeah. They started howling. Yeah. And but they were actually howling almost the pitch of the song, the notes on top of it. And I'm thinking, how smart are these? I mean, hello. So this is why I do this show, because I, I've understood now we've had a lot of dogs in our family. Um None quite like Buster, uh, is astute and, and connected. Um, and a lot of that is because how much time we spent with him and I spent with him every day since he was little. We haven't neglected him for many. He doesn't just, you know, if we're chilling, you know, and I'm working, and I'm doing my jingle production, whatever, I'm working in the yard, what I'm doing, wherever he is, I always, when I see him, when I come by, I always give him a pet, say, but how you doing, buddy? And he's just chilling. But I don't ignore him because he'll always make eye contact with me. So these kind of things just keep you connected with your, your pooch and cats, for that matter. But, you know, dogs are different than cats. So anyway, I thought just one of those emotional nights for all these kind of things. So real quick, 
I'm back. Um, of course, the temperament of uh, the uh, the uh, is very affectionate and friendly, and uh, the, you know he needs his alpha, the leader. Uh, height and weight: males somewhere between 17 and 19 inches, and females about 10 percent less, which is in the case of most all breeds. The weight: some sources say between 55 and 66 pounds, while others say 35 to 45 pounds. So. You just have to see which breeder you're dealing with with this particular breed. Uh, health problems, unfortunately, they are prone to that hip dysplasia. Uh, my huskies only howl when they hear the sirens from the fire truck. There you go. But it's still, or a cop car, that's hilarious. So they, they know that there's probably danger there, and they go, oh, my God, somebody's having a problem. Yeah, who knows? But, uh, yeah, so all these things can exist with the music, too, you know. Um, the dogs do like music. We have, at which I haven't turned you on yet, um, we have on, if you go to wolftunes.com, there's what they call dog music, um, relaxational music. And I've produced, hello, Robin, I've produced... Let me just uh, show you what uh, these are. These are tracks that are for dogs to listen to to keep them calm, just like you listen to soundscape music off the uh, the internet or whatever. Um, if you go to wolftunes.com, they've been working on that uh, site, and everything is in little sections here. Our dog ditties are there. Uh, there's all so much stuff, but the dog relaxational. Um, let me find here. Guitar meditation tracks. They may be some of them. Pause meditate here. Pause meditative music tracks. Yeah. Okay. These are uh, kind of meditation tracks for the dogs. I'll play one a little bit here. You can hear it. called guitar meditation tracks this kind of stuff so you can go right here to move tunes and play these on your computer or your device and just lay there with your dog and just a whole variety of them so many of them there's so many we've done I did over a hundred of these I think then nature meditative blend tracks. Rainforest, here's some dreams. Wolf dreams. So, all that stuff is there. I wanted to show, shift over right now from our breed of the night, which is our case hun, case hun to um, a wolf driver track. Um, this track um, is a parody. Now, when we did these, the Wolf Driver, I told you, you know, he writes all these original s s lyrics about dogs and all kinds of things about the love of dogs and activities and the carts, and it just it goes on and on and on. And um, he also decided, as, as, as long as he's doing originals, let's do some parodies. And Sue, I had all different kind of breeds growing up. So maybe there was a favorite for you. You might want to go look at the shelter and see if you find it. You know, when you see it, you'll know. That's what happened with Buster. We would look for a while and to get another dog. We uh, left Santa Cruz and all our dogs had passed. And we got down here. We didn't want one right away because we're both working full time and didn't want to leave a dog alone all day. And I became halfway working from home. So we found Buster and we looked online for a rescue and found him. Brought him home, 10 weeks old, just fell in love with him. Um, what was I going to say about the, oh, the parodies. So, the Wolf Driver also had all these great songs when he grew up, you know, all the songs a lot of us grew up with, you know, from different hit artists that we all know about, Fleetwood Mac, ACDC, Johnny Cash, Dire Straits, Elton John, um, 
uh, Mariah Carey. I mean, it goes on, and we've got so many I can't remember them all. But we did uh, we did a whole album's worth of Fleetwood Mac parodies, which means we took a lot of the Fleetwood Mac tunes, the ones you the hits you know for sure, and, and some album cuts that you may or may not have heard unless you're familiar with the albums. And he wrote lyrics to parody onto those tunes about the dogs. So this one here um, is called Pack Daddy. And uh, this is Romani singing. She also sang Princess is the Girl, the original I played last night about uh, the beautiful princess, the wolf driver's female husky. But um, this is our band. I produced this with the Wolf Play Band. And it's about being the leader, the alpha of your pack. And even if it's just one dog, the more control you have, the better your relationship. And um, I think we know that. And um, control is not about being tough, but giving structure to your dog's lifestyle. And in this song, you'll hear about the fun that comes from this philosophy. To find out more about what we do, please visit our websites at uh, wolftunes.com and wolfdriver.com. So thank you so much for your interest in this, if you should do that. Um, Billy Joel, did we do a Billy Joel? Hmm. Let me think if we did. You know, we. I, I don't think we did a Billy Joel parody, but we can. We can. Um, a matter of fact, the Wolf Driver has um, a couple of parodies uh, lyrics written, but we have been so busy doing these shows, we haven't done any more production lately, but I'll mention that to them to get a Wolf, a Billy Joel parody. Wh which Billy Joel tune do you, would you like us to try to parody to? Because we can make any of them happen. You know, just the way you are. I mean, there's so many. Let me, give me a know which one you like, a favorite, and I'll uh, we'll get some lyrics together about the dogs and parody a Billy Joel tune. Uh, just the way you are would work because you know don't go change and try to please me. I'm gonna I'm gonna be your trainer. <laughs> we could do a good one on that one, but whatever the case, that'd be fun to do. Good suggestion, Sue. Thank you for that. So meantime, this is uh, Romney, and this is about Pac Gill. Most of it, if you're familiar with Fleetwood Mac, will recognize this particular song. It's a ballad. It's about the pack daddy is the whoop driver. It takes these dogs out. He's the alpha. Pack daddy, you know you make me try. You know that I love to run free. You always understand.
so free where they belong because the wolf daddy is uh, the wolf driver is so strong. You say he knows how to train them and get them leash free. So that was uh, Pack Daddy Fleetwood uh, Mac parody. Well, we've had a great time tonight, and we're going to say good evening for now. Y'all enjoy the rest of your Saturday night. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what time. It might be an earlier afternoon show. It just depends of how things go. It might be later. Uh, to Sundays are kind of funny. We do have some guests in town here, and so we're going to do our best. But um, you guys are great tuning in, and um, what else can I say? It's all good. And we're going to say uh, good night tonight and play our our uh, ditty one more time about our uh, breed of the night. It was a Mimi's mom dog, mom's dog, about 40 years ago. A keys hong. And it was Tina, the keys hong. And this is her little ditty, paying tribute to her. Okay? We're talking about Tina, our keys hong. It's a Later. animal with a strong resemblance to its ancestor called a Samoyed. That's Tina R.K.'s hound. Now her eyes are made of size and dark in color, and her ears are erect, triangular in shape, set high on the head. She's feeling the Thank you, Deborah. You too. That's Tina R.K.'s hound. Have my mom watch later. Cool. It's fun to do that. Tina loves everyone and needs to be part of the family. She's very active. Her breed is a real character that is quick to learn. Be trained with a gentle voice. That was the key to keep Tina. Tina with me. Tina the case hound. My little contact dog with strong resemblance to a Samboy. Her eyes are mean in shape and dark in color. Thank you, Caroline. You have a great night. That's right. Rest in peace. We love y'all. We're going to jump jam right out of here. And thanks so much for being with us. Woof Diddy saying good night. Have a great Saturday night. We'll talk to you tomorrow. So long now. Good night. Woof Diddy here.